Hello folks, greetings, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Today we have something, oof, it's a bit of a blast from the past, golden oldie you might say. Ravel's 132nd Tornado GR1 RAF. Now then, <clears throat> obviously not a new kit. Uh, but as there is another one uh, from a rival manufacturer in the offering, costing about four times as much money, I thought it might be worth revisiting an old favourite. Now, admittedly I haven't made this, I know people that have. Another challenging kit from Ravel. Uh, it was actually created in uh, mid-90s, I think 95, I think it was actually... Um, is it 31 Squadron, I think it is? We'll get, get into that later, but it was there... Um, uh, 80th anniversary, 1995-1915. It's, it's been reincarnated a couple of times this kit actually. It's The first incarnation has got slightly different artwork. Um, this is the sort of second generation box. They brought this out uh, again as an anniversary of 2015 with this limited edition tag on it. They then brought it out again in 2018 I think as the Gulf War GR1. But that um, Kit is actually included in here anyway, as you'll see. The, it's got the markings and the uh, uh, the colour callouts for the Gulf War option as well. So it's quite interesting, really, that it's almost like a little bit of badge engineering with the box what they do. So if you see that Gulf War one, it's not a it's not a new tool. It's the same kit as in this box, but just with a different box. Speaking of boxes, it's actually quite a decent box, quite a sensible one. The top opening box, which is for Ravel, very rare and a much better design than this silly end opening. The only downside is that it is a bit thin, the cardboard, it's quite flimsy, I've got to be honest, compared to all those that you see today from, you know, Tamiya or Airfix or whatever. It's a bit... Yeah, they, they didn't spend a lot on the box. Anyway, <clears throat> kit number 04705. On the side we've got uh, a few of the photos of the finished model. Uh, starting to look quick, just a quick glance, and you can see straight away this is again the old school from Ravel, where they weren't necessarily employing the greatest modelers of all time to do these. Uh, a few reflections here, just a bit more light over there. Um, if you look carefully, uh, they're slightly toy like in those photographs, I think. Uh, and then the other side is just a lot of blur, really. So, anyway, without further ado. I think we just crack into it really and have a have a go, open it up, see what it's like inside. If I get my camera to work, okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, big box, which I will plunk over there. The lid off, at least. There we go. Very huge decal sheet. So let's look at that first. Let's just pop that over there. Decals, let's have a look at them. Right, well, they look quite impressive actually, let's just bring you in again. Now then, what we have here, just to prove my point, we've got the, I think it's 31 Squadron here, the uh, anniversary, 80th anniversary, 1915 to 1995. We've got all the generic RAF Tornado markings down here, and then we've got a couple of really interesting ones. We've got here we have the Dam Busters 617 Squadron. Uh, always, you know, a, a big favourite I think with modellers is that you can't go wrong with the Dam Busters, to be honest. But then here we've got this um, this Gulf option. So we've got it's the famous Meg Eater. I'll bring you right in so you can see this. Can you see the shark? There we go. And here Meg Eater and some very angry looking eyes. A lot of bombing raids. Looks like they've shot down a MiG, hence the MiG Eater logo. They've got an actual air to air kill by the look of it. Hey, that's impressive. Or did they just blow him up on the ground? I'm not sure. And then some very angry shark's mouth. Everyone loves a shark's mouth. There's nothing not to like there. Now, there's quite a lot of uh, stencils, if we're being completely honest. See here, there's a lot. It's not to the levels of that Phantom. I mean, it's showing up to yeah. There's a couple of hundred markings in total. But when you consider the scale of this kit, um, 
that's not that excessive actually. <laughs> if you think about it, I did a review uh, for Halloween The Phantoms and the Airfix uh, 70 second scale Phantom had 547 stencils and markings. So this is actually quite, considering it's a much bigger kit, two scales up, that's quite modest actually. Those are nice though. It does say at the bottom that it's printed in Italy, so I'm guessing that it's um, cartograph. They look nice. They look really good. They all look in register. The colours are right. Not too glossy, not too dull. And you've got all your sky shadow pods and boss pods and bombs and LGB. It's a really nice decal shape that. I've got to be honest with you. One of the nicest I've seen for a long while, even though it's not, not new. Isn't it? So that, that's well done. We'll pop that somewhere safe. Then we'll have a look at the instructions. <coughs> so, bring in a wee bit more. Uh, that? That's about right. So we've got shot of the artwork, bit of a description in German and then in English. Not sure why there's so much more German. That just tells you that they, they talk a lot more. You know. <laughs> um, usual thing now, we've got to bear in mind. Sorry, come out again. We've got to bear in mind, we're talking, uh, this is a kit from the 90s, this is old school. Okay, so. We have to make allowances for that. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is the price. So I paid, I think it was £35, and it's about it's anywhere between £35 and £45, depending on which sort of boxing version you get. I think the Gulf War one was £45 or thereabouts, um, which is still available today. Um, so, in, you know, in Europe it's about €50, Euros, America $55-$60, thereabouts. So. Ah, okay, we've got... <laughs> oh, this reminds us of uh, Great Wall Hobby. Perhaps this is where they got the idea from. So before, you, before you assemble your kit, you have to assemble your instructions, which is always a challenge. Also, instead of having like the modern ones all modern in colour, it's all black and white, and then when they have parts that you're not going to use, instead of greying them out, it looks like somebody's gone at it with a marker pen, which I promise you isn't me. <laughs> That's actually the way it's printed. Crossed out. No, no, you're not going to use any of these. So it's really old school, isn't it? It really is. Uh, so you got your sprue trees there. Actually, there's not many things that you don't use. It's really just the uh, couple of the pods and a couple of the bombs. They look like they are laser-guided bombs that you're not supposed to use. Anyway, we'll come to that later when we get onto the sprues. But in the meantime, I'll just reassemble the instructions for you. Uh, pity that Revel can't afford a couple of staples, isn't it? It's not like this spend all the money on the box, is it? <laughs> is it? Anyway. So, I'll, I'll whip through this quickly because it's a bit flimsy and a bit nasty, aren't they, really? So, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Here we go. So, we start off with the ejection seat construction. And they have this nasty thing when they have a time, which how long it should take you, you know, which is a, just a load of old nonsense. I've never seen anything quite like this. Only Revel have ever done that, to my knowledge, but don't like it. I'm going to give up on that. Right, there we go. Injection seats, making those up. I think aftermarket's the way to go, because I don't think they're going to be that brilliant, to be honest. Um, cockpit instruments, and then you start assembling the cockpit tub itself. And you've got a lot of painting to do. Uh, there's also a lot of decals involved, uh, but they're all provided, so you should be okay with that, unless you want to go the aftermarket route. Then we've got then we've got the assembly of the tub, putting those injection seats in, popping that into um, like a block that here it's a block for the assembly and the mounting of the undercarriage. Uh, then it's telling you to drill a few holes. Then you pop it into a separate nose section, so it has a separate nose, which I think is quite a good thing actually. That's a sensible idea at this scale, especially. It's a unitary sort of assembly uh, method. Then we've got a nice looking uh, radar, radio for the nose there, and you can pop that on. I don't know if you can have it hinged or not, I think you might be able to. That might be worth considering, that would look quite nice in a diorama with the, the radar open, especially when there are actually two, two radar systems, that's impressive. And then we get into strange into the pylons, I'm not sure why that is. Ah, the reason is that they're about to mount them into the swinging wings 
and of course because the swing wings they have to pivot the pylons so that's probably why they put it in so early in the build. Then you assemble your swing wings which look rather crude if I'm being honest but anyway we shall see. And then your tail planes again look a bit very straightforward and crude. Um, I just got to say, I just, the impression I'm getting as I'm looking through this, and I haven't really paid attention ever in the past. But the kind of um, the instructions are quite crude, but they do, you know, they they're, they're avoiding any detail. There's no, it doesn't show you any panel lines or rivets, which you don't need on the instructions, do you? It does seem very clear. In fairness, I think that's quite a sensible way of doing it, especially when you're at a big scale. You know, you don't need them to show you the rivets and panel lines because you, it's a big scale. You can see them, you know. So, I don't know, I think that um, they've been quite sensible there. So your wings are going in, top and bottom of the fuselage, clums, like a clum shell around it, clumps together. And then you have your pivot system, shows you how to make sure that everything's working and swinging and the tail planes are gimbling correctly. Then, I need to see it here. Then we've got the tail system going in with the um, ECM um, little pods that are front and rear, uh, various bits of electronic trickery that are on the aircraft. And then you start building the, the engines. Now I've got to say, I think that this is where you might want to consider some aftermarket. Not sure how detailed these are going to be, but we'll, we'll, we'll see later. We'll see later. Then you bring the three assemblies together: the centre section that's got the wings in, the nose section, and the tail section, and the big fin. Now we've got the intakes. This is where the fun begins, because this is where I understand that we have a few issues with the kit. Everybody says be very careful when you're assembling this. Again, a bit like the 48 scale. Do lots of dry running, you know, dry dry fitting. Don't go rushing in with the glue until everything's just right. They go on ultimately, they've got the uh, intake ramps here. So it's nice and detailed, you know, as you would expect at this scale. Then you've got your air brakes at the back, just underneath the big fin. I've got to say, I hate this instructions coming apart thing, that's crazy. It's just like Great Wall Hobby, all these separate pieces. But anyway, moment. Then we've got the option, do you want the undercarriage up or down? That's when you build your undercarriage. I think it's weight on wheels tyres, which is good. That certainly gives that impression there. We'll have a look at that when we get the parts out. And then we have the choice of whether you're going to have your wheels down or have them up. I think at this scale, to be honest, it's very unusual to have it in flight. It's, you'd be wasting so much detail. It's, you've paid for it, you know. So I think when you get to the bigger scales, for me anyway, I think they have to be you know, on the ground showing off there, all the detail of the undercarriage and the bays and everything and the wheel wells, etc. Then we've got the nose wheel. No, sorry, not the nose wheel, it's the... Why are we doing that again? 44, 43, 44. Okay, now it's some support parts that go on the legs before they actually go into the wheel wells. Okay and then telling you how to glue them in, how to position the, uh, the doors here and the lights, landing lights. Um, then we get to, I saw the instructions again, <laughs> and we get to, uh, if you want those wheels up, which you're probably not going to do, but anyway, if you want them up, you just obviously just trim up a little bit, take the tabs off the, uh, the doors, because it's obviously the same part and then you just bob them in, bob's your uncle. Uh, Pito head on the nose. Uh, personally I've got a Master Models turned the brass one which is probably better than the plastic option if I'm going to be honest. And then you've got your, is it flare pod underneath the nose? And then you've got various little lamps, intakes and uh, uh, some of these are footholds aren't they? And the mouths are cannon as well, they're 108. See that, got the Mauser cannon going in, which is quite good, the muzzle. And then finally, a couple of uh, probes and uh, sensors that go on the tail. And then uh, likewise, a couple of aerials behind the cockpit canopy. Antennas. And then you've got the option, do you want to have your um, 
refueling probe, which I think another nice bit of detail here. Whoops, sorry. Refueling probe, yeah? Do you want to have that in or out? Extended or flush? That's a nice item. I'm, I'm definitely going to have that extended if I build this kit. And then you've got the option to prop open the canopy. And then we get into the detail of the pylons and all these uh, fixing points, hard points, and how they actually uh, have the magnetic connectors for the stores and weapons that go underneath. Quite a lot of detail, that. it's not bad, you know, it's not bad. I mean, actually, this kit for the money, I think, at this sort of money, it's 35 to 40 quid, 30 seconds scale. Crazy, it's great value, you know. I'll tell you that, way up front, even if it's not brilliant, it's still good value. And you've got your 1500 litre tank, Boz Pod, Sky Shadow Pod, these are all the ones we saw on the 48 scale kit. And uh, also the Hindenburg tanks, or two, 2250 litres as they are officially called. And a thousand pound laser guided bomb. And then a standard thousand uh, pound cluster bomb, I think that is. And then finally, you end up with the nose, a few trim pieces and pitots and sensors on the nose, a couple on the tail, and fitting in your store's loadout. And shows it in the good old fashioned way, head on, shot. And then if you want to have the other option where it's all tanks, tanks and bombs, you've got all these different options of how you want to load out your plane. That's that's nice. I like the way they've done that. It's uh, I like the traditional style of the way they presented it. It's clear enough. And that's it. And then we get on to the scheme. So we've got uh, the stencils, which looks, as I said, it looks reasonable compared to that Phantom we talked about with 500 of them. Well, nearly 600. <laughs> Um, all the stencils going on all the parts of the aircraft, including the pylons. Then we have got the underside, the top side, buzz pods, sky shadow pod, all the stencils, and then the general decals that go on there in all the various positions. Very, very clearly done. I'm honest, these instructions seem... I did have the earlier generation of this kit, I never built it, sold it on. In fact, I had a lot of them, I had about six, <laughs> and I sold them all off. I made a profit on the fire call, but anyway, about ten years ago. Um, but I don't remember the point I was going to make, I don't remember the instructions being as good as this, I remember them being very nasty and vague and, uh, and there were different earlier generation instructions that I thought was unintelligible. Anyway, we've got the RAF Bruggen, this is the 31 Squadron, the one with the star on the tail, the anniversary one. And it gives you all the markings for that. Then we've got the Dam Busters 617 Squadron. Now who doesn't want to build that? Yeah, with the lightning bolt on the tail. Uh, latterly, of course, they showed a burst dam even, uh, the decorative tour version of the Tornado when it was the Farewell Edition, which is on the 48 scale Ravel Edition of the kit. So there you've got those, and then finally, just to prove the point I made at the beginning about don't be fooled by the Gulf War scheme on the box of the new issue of the same kit, here we have MIG Eater. MIG Eater, and this is... it doesn't say what squadron actually, that's interesting, like it was a secret, but anyway, MIG Eater, which was much copied and much emulated aircraft uh, for the Gulf War in 1991 against Iraq, and based at Tobruk in Saudi Arabia. So, I've got to be honest, um, those instructions are definitely better than the first generation of the kit when it came out in the 90s, which I, I say I had several of them and it was, it was nasty. It was like very yellow paper, there was very poor definition and it just seemed to lack clarity. I remember looking at it thinking, don't fancy this, but this looks clear. I quite like those instructions, they're fine. So no problems there, let's have a look at the actual kit itself. Now then, where do we begin? Let's go with this one. This is... <laughs> this is what? This is what? Well, lots of parts. Any sprue number? Mm, no. How very strange, they're doing a bit of an airfix thing here, not, 
Oh no, oh, no, it's there, it's there, it's hiding. D, it's brew D. So, it's a big one. It's a bit missing in the middle, I don't like that. Let's bring you in. Let you have a look at this. So we've got lots and lots of interesting parts to see here. So, we've got the undercarriage, and they are indeed weight on wheels with a bulge and a flat spot underneath. We've got the refueling probe here. I'm starting to wonder if I want to be better just moving this the other way. Doesn't that help us with the focus? How's that? If I come in a bit sharper and closer, we might have a chance. How's that? Better? I think it is, isn't it? There we go. So we've got the refueling probes, as I mentioned here. That's the actual probe itself, and this is the housing. That's really nice. We've got the weight on wheels here. Plenty of detail there. Uh, lots of ancillary parts. These are the um, pylon uh, grabs and magnets that hold onto the stores. You've got your front nose wheel, pair of nose wheels. They're in two halves, hmm, not sure about that, but yeah. I'll tell you one thing about this kit though that strikes me straight away, which, uh, which was different to the previous one uh, of the same kit. There's not much flash of any kind on here, not on this sprue. This sprue is really clean. Um, we've got the afterburner rings here. After burner rings here, and we've got the actual uh, engine nozzles themselves here. And if you can see, that's got like a slide moulded interior. Then, flipping it upside down, we've got the instrument panel. Instruments for the, uh, I think that's for the navigator, and this is for the pilot. We've got our nose, le uh, main legs for the uh, the gear there. And we have got various parts of the legs and struts that support it. Also the seats, ejector seats here, with their seat belts actually built into it. We've got an interesting part here. Just draw your attention to this one, because otherwise we'd miss it, I think. Which is, if I can find it, these here. These. These are the gears which operate the uh, thrust reverser buckets when the plane lands and then pops its thrust reversers and blasts thrust forwards by this system. Very dramatic when you see it. It makes a lot of noise and it's quite spectacular. This is why you will see burn marks on the tail of the aircraft. But that's a lovely sprue. That really is nice actually. It's not, it's not at all rebel like. Uh, no complaints about that at all. It all looks smashing. I'll pop that back in its little bag. Okay. We always have trouble with these bags, don't we? But we always make them a little bit on the tight side. Have to save money no doubt. There we go. Okay, that's that one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna refer back to regarding those thrust buckets just to see where that was. Because I missed it in the instructions somehow. Where was it? Oh yeah, okay. Right, this is the sad thing about it. Okay, I'm just going back to this. Here we are. This is the one sad thing about it is... If you look carefully, there's those parts I've just shown you. What is it? 67 and 66. But there's no actual thrust reverses. You can't deploy them as open. Reversed. It's just it's purely in this sort of fixed position. The outer reverses are it's fixed in place, so that's a bit disappointing. However, we might be able to solve that with some aftermarket. Maybe we shall see. Right, next sprue. Let's have a butcher's. One thing that will strike you about this kit is I haven't actually, I haven't actually been into it before. So I haven't, even though I've had it for some time, <laughs> I haven't actually been in and opened these bags. They're still sealed. Bear with me. 
You can always tell if I've opened one because I put Tamiya tape on them instead because it's easier to get on and off. <coughs> okay. So we've got here oh, quite a few chunky items. It strikes you how big it is straight away. I mean, just look at the cockpit, it's huge, it's bigger than my hand, you know. Hmm. So that's the size of the cockpit tub with all great sort of nice, big, clear, well-defined switch gear, which uh, if I zoom in, you'll see better. Okay. A little bit too far there. There we go. So you can really see there the, uh, the detail work. Mm. And we've got the nose section here where the the radar is, mounting for the radar, and the nose ring, outer ring, and then we've got, we've got a little bit of flash here, but it's quite clean looking flash, just on the uh, just on the uh, gear door, main gear door, and then we've got these uh, rails underneath. Look at the size of these things. There. The size of that compared to my hand, it's absolutely huge. They run the length of the fuselage underneath. Wow! <laughs> huge! And then you've got various uh, bulkheads here, bulkhead with some switches, switch gear on it, connectors there. Little bit, little bit um, soft the moulding perhaps, not, not as sharp as I might have liked at this scale. But not bad, not bad. And then we've got the uh, pylons, various pylons. Looks nice and crisp, some good detail on them. So there's a nice sprit, another one. A little bit of flash just on those doors, but nothing, nothing major. There's no widespread flash. It's as though Revell have taken back the mould and cleaned it up before they've reissued the kit. Because I have to be honest with you, on the original issue, which I had, say, several of, it was really flashy and a bit nasty. So. That's a bit of an improvement. Do you know what, this is going to take me hours, so I'm just going to plunk it on there and come back to that later. Right, now the big stuff. Here's a monster sprue. Look at the size of this thing. Jeez. What a beast. <laughs> come on, let's have you. Oh, okay, there we go. This is going to come out. There we go. Look at that. The size of these parts, they're huge compared to my hand. Yeah. Massive, isn't it? This is a big kit. This is the reason I haven't bought, uh, built it because uh, I haven't got the room. But look at that. Now, I would say that, again, given when you consider the scale we're talking about here, it's a bit. Soft. The details are kind of very soft. They're not as deeply etched as I would have expected, and I'm a little bit worried that when you, if you can pick that up there, I'm just a bit worried that when you get a couple of layers of paint, you know, with the primer on there, and you come to do your wash at the end, that's not going to necessarily stick that well because I think it's going to fill in very easily. It's very, very shallow um, and if we think back to that 70 second scale airfix phantom that was much more defined very much with I think thought in mind of people using multiple layers of paint we've got the nose here which is a nice separate nose so no join that would be nice that's good yeah this is the one part that disappoints me this is where the thrust reversers should really have been there it's just a moulded piece, you know, with the thrust reversers moulded into place, so no option to have them out unless you want to do some fairly hefty surgery. That's slightly disappointing. Okay, um, oh, yes, we've got the, just look at the, the nose section here, the, the cockpit area, I should say. So huge, I'm struggling to get it away. There we go. Again, very, very softly, very, very faintly moulded in. 
it's not not great in terms of the surface quality. Uh, it doesn't fade out or anything. It looks it's kind of consistent. It's just consistently thin. I think that's going to be a bit of a problem. It reminds me of the old Matchbox kits, you know. And then we've got one, two. Are these the same? No, nope, they're different. They're different. The sprues are just fast, aren't they? It's a huge kit. Huge, huge, huge. Alright, with me. This is a monster display. Try and bring you out a bit. Let's see what's going on. So we've got here absolute beast. Okay. The wings and the tail. I'll do the tail first. Thing. Look at that. What a monster. Look at the size of this thing. It's just gargantuan isn't it? Huge! Uh, again it's nicely moulded, there's no flash. It's, it's a nice moulding, it's just a bit faint though. Everything's rather faint. Which, you know, if you weren't going to paint it, if you're just going to have it and say look this is what a tornado is like under the skin, it would be fine. But when you've painted it up, this is going to, some of this detail is going to fill in and it's going to end up being not defined enough. I think, it's, I think you're going to struggle getting a wash to go down on this. Somehow, uh, or at least to go down and go where you want it to, and not just rub off. That's the danger. But the pieces are beautifully figured, and there's nothing. Uh, you know, oh, there's a bit of flash there. Right, it's off the. Oh, and there's a bit of flash at the top here. If you can move that out. It's not. Uh, it's not a showstopper, I don't think. But you can see it there, can't you? See it. Yeah, that's a nasty little bit of flash. They didn't really need to have. But generally, there's there's no flash. You know, it's just just here and there. It's this odd spot. Strange. Strange that they could have avoided that a bit more. Then we've got your wings, which are again are massive, aren't they? Absolutely huge wings. Um, is that flash? I think it is. It's an odd piece of flash. A little, it almost looks like it's deliberate. It's like a little crescent shaped piece of flash in the most peculiar place. Can you see it? Isn't that odd? What a strange little bit of flash that is. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be any. It's not that there's a lot of flash, it's just odd spots as they didn't quite clean up their mould enough. Very odd. But yeah, it's huge wings, massive. So they're upper and lower. I think the upper is... Yeah, the upper is the one with the slats in. But again, you can't have the slats or the flaps open or the ailerons or anything. It's just a fixed wing. So that's a bit old school and a bit... You know, 70 seconds can only 48, okay, but not not 30 seconds, too big, you need to have all that detail. So again, it's a bit like the thrust reversers, you can't have it open, you'd have to do major surgery or get some aftermarket parts and start cutting with your saw. It's a bit of a blow, really. Anyway, moving on. Uh, wow, another fairly huge sprue here, look at this, we've got all the tanks and things. And there's quite a few parts on this one that I don't think I've used. Wow, it's a big one. So we've got the Hindenburg tanks, the big ones here. Those big Hindenburgs there. And then we've got a couple of ECM type pods and the Boz pod. This is the Boz pod here fins on it. Uh, a couple of sidewinder missiles, air-to-air -air missiles here, which I don't think you use, but anyway, it's an option. And I think this one, I don't think that one's used either in this variant, but it looks like it's a centerline tank for the fuselage. And I don't think this one's used either, another, another under fuselage uh, pod of some description. 
And then we come to the last big sprue, which is... Oh, there's some more weapons here. How do I get in? Okay, okay, okay. And here we go. Now then, I'm starting to wonder if these are just another couple of Hindenburgs, but they look bigger. They are bigger. Um, they're like two giant Hindenburgs. Extra large, and then you've got another couple of them there. Big, big tanks. We've got your laser-guided bombs, that very much as uh, used in the, uh, in the Gulf War. And all the fins and the, for the pods and the tanks here. Uh, we've got a um, Sky Shadow pod here, I think it is. It will be when it has its fins on it. And then on this side we've got your conventional cluster bombs here. And various fins that go on those as well. Uh, these are some of the um, sensors that go on the Sky Shadow pod. So, there we go. That just leaves us really with a couple of uh, clear parts. And we've got, I'm not going to open this bag because I think it's pointless because it's very small, but we have here the uh, lenses for like the FLIR pod at the, at the front. Forward looking infrared, I'm just trying to remember what it means, FLIR. Forward looking infrared uh, sensor. And then we've got the main clear parts, which I will open, so let's have a look at these. Okay. Very carefully. I'm most nervous about clear parts. Oh, they're pretty good. They're two little... It's one of the two little flaws. Mm, there's a bit of a mark, a scratch in the screen there. Yeah, it is a little scratch. Like a... It's like a... Um, Present shaped imperfection, so you can see it. Don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera. You should see it there, like a, a crescent shape here. Yeah. yeah, but the main one's got one or two very minor imperfections, but overall, pretty clear. It's not bad, ain't bad at all. Yeah. You see the uh, the cord for the explosive charge for detonating the canopy. That's well represented. Instead of having this horrible centre seam, that looks that's great. You don't have to do any clean up on that. Just think it probably needs a bit of a polish up. Um, yeah, there are two little imperfections, but it's not bad. You know. Again, we're talking a kit that's forty pounds or less. So at the end of the day it's not a huge amount of money so I think we have to be fair about it you know if it was £130 like some others are reputed to be that are coming soon that's a lot of money and that's not going to be forgiven but at this price you know there's parts of it that I'm disappointed with and parts of it that I'm very very impressed beyond my expectations so they are disappointments first um, obviously there's one or two little glitches there I'll just put that away where it's safe actually um, I think the main disappointment is the fact you can't have your flats or slats or, or even your ailerons uh, <laughs> open in any movable position or dynamic, shall we say, position. This is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? Let's just get that back in there. There we go. Yeah. You can't have the slats or the flaps open, you know, they've got spoiler-ons on the top of the wing. No, that's all just fixed. Very old school. Can't be posed, can't be made to look more alive and animated. And the thrust reversers at the back of the engines can't be made animated either. It's just set open in the flight position, so it's a bit... You know, I think this is really the, the way that things have moved on over the last 20, 25 years. Um, the new iteration that's coming out, uh, I've seen some photographs from Italiari, I think it is, uh, and I've seen some photos and it's it's amazing, you know, it's everything. You can have any option, flats, spoiler-ons, flaps, you know, you can have your ailerons how you want them, you can have your thrust reverses open, whatever you want. 
Uh, I mean, at least you can have the canopy open with this, that's something. And I guess it's horses for courses, you know. I mean, I've got to be honest, I think that the, the quality of the moulding disappoints only in its shallowness of the detail. Everything's shallow. Uh, some of the some of the panel line detail is raised. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, honestly. Not too sure. Um, but on the fuselage and the main parts, it, it looks correct. It's just very faint. And it's going to fill in, you know, and you might want to even think about rescribing. So it could be a lot of work, you know. But, I don't know. When you want to go to that level uh, in a kit that costs this much money, if you just want a big, meaty tornado, you know, to have perhaps in a cabinet or something where people aren't going to stand too close to it, then I think it's absolutely fine. And I think it'll build reasonably quickly because it's, it's clean. It doesn't need a lot of cleaning up, even though it's a cheaper, you know, Revel kit, which sometimes can be a bit nasty. Uh, it's cleaner the mould than I expected, so that was actually a, a, a joy. I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be a bit nasty, because I'm sure the previous ones I had, they were all a bit a bit flashy and a bit nasty, and it put me right off ever building it. That doesn't, though. That looks all right. You're just going to have to go light with your paint coats, you know. I wouldn't be priming it, just me, but I wouldn't prime it, because I think you're filling in detail of that fine lining uh, and grave panel lines you can't afford to do it. You need to get the very light paint coats if you want to get a wash on at the end um, to get that sort of finishing detail. But anyway, there we go. So it's it's not a new kit. It's old school. You can still pick them up. You can pick up the Gulf War version which they brought out. Uh, I can't remember the model number for that, but you'll know it's the same details. But it's got the Gulf scheme on it, uh, bombing some Iraqi airfield in the artwork. Uh, and I say it's about 40 45 pounds. So, to be honest, for the money, you're getting a lot of plastic, and it's a big kit, um, probably quite good fun. I know there's some issues, somebody may mentioned an issue with the tail fit as well, but not too sure if I haven't built it. But overall, I think at 40 45 quid, something that big and that, that involving, it's got good weapons, plenty of equipment. It is the GR1, so it's got the earlier type weapons for the Tornado. Uh, there's none of the, you know, TL pods and um, Turner pods and the later stuff. But you could always get perhaps after market. I think there may be one or two of those on the market. You could buy them later. I would say that for the money, I think that's a sort of a, sort of a seven and a half out of ten. I give it a thumbs up for the money, good value. Uh, if you haven't got, you know, I mean, the price of the new one that's alleged to be. A lot you know three times the price of this and then some and I think that's probably too much really but at this price I mean that's like the price of a 48 scale kit you know you pay 60 70 pound for a 48 scale you know lightning from Tamiya or something like that or a Tomcat so you think about it this is a lot of plane a lot of model for your money give you plenty of uh, good dark winter nights enjoyment building it what's not to like so actually overall I think I think I'm slightly more impressed than I thought I was going to be. I thought it was going to be, you know, but no, it's all right. It's nice and clean, and it looks it looks. It's just a shame it isn't deeper, isn't it? If they deepened it and added a few a few things, but you can go to people like Flight Path. They do things like flaps and slats. You can always scribe and add all the photo X that they do, uh, and they do all the things like um, ladders for the crew to get in and out of. I think I may have had a set of those at one time. So there's a lot of options you can add to it. It, it sort of it lends itself to aftermarket, I think, especially at the price. And you've got like 80 or 90 quid to go out before you come to the price of the other one that's coming out. So I think that, yes, that's still good value. And although it's a bit old and it's simple, um, if you don't want to do a too involved thing or the opposite, you want to go super, super detail it, either way, it probably suits you perfectly, suits you perfectly. Uh, what's not to like. So there you go. So that's the Revel Tornado GR1, 30 second scale. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we have got, um, we may be doing another vid soon around the time of Telford in a couple of weeks, week or two, uh, because obviously that's not going to happen. And I'm, I'm going to, well, I think I might do, I think I'm going to do the good, the bad and the ugly. And I'm going to do maybe three separate vids. My favourite models I've done so far. My not so favourite ones and why and then the ones that I think are absolutely hideous 
or were very difficult to build. The good, the bad and the ugly, I think we'll do it. Three separate vids to keep them nice and short, perhaps 15 minute vids or something like that. Famous last words, but that, that could be quite good fun and it might encourage other modellers to think about theirs in those terms and how they've enjoyed some more than others and uh, what the pitfalls were and whether they lived up to the review expectations that people like me or yourselves have done when you've opened the box and thought, oh, this is marvellous, and then you come to build it and found out that it won't go together, <laughs> naming no names at this stage. So I think we'll do that in a couple of weeks. And in the meantime, uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Um, uh, take care of yourselves. And then we've got some difficult times at the moment. Please take care of yourselves. And I hope to see you again very, very soon. And in the meantime, thanks a lot. Bye for now.